Wana asfiwe kariyako family, it's another Sunday morning. I take this opportunity on behalf of the executive and the entire leadership of Kariyako Methodist Church to today's morning service, where our theme is suffering for Christ. Since this pandemic started, we have not been able to address you as the leaders of this church, but we have been sharing together through our services every morning, and we thank the Lord for enabling us to, pro to deliver you the service wherever you have been watching from your homes. Today, I come before you first as a born again Christian and the blessing of the Lord to thank you all for participating in all our services and being also able to support all the church activities that we do. You know it has not been easy when we are not coming here but through your support, we have been able to carry most of our activities. May the good Lord bless you and keep, keep and preserve you as we go this pandemic. I'm sure the Lord will take good care of us, our families, the leaders of this country, the leaders of our church, and everyone in general. Now, let's go to our service. Today, it's being... Uh, coming from the book of uh, First Peter, chapter 3, verse 8 to 17. Once again, the theme is suffering for the right. Finally, all of you of one mind, having compassion for one another, love as brothers, be tender-hearted and be courteous, not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, blessing knowing that you were called to this, that you may inherit a blessing. For he who would love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil suffering for right and wrong. And who is he who will harm you if you become the followers of what is good? But even if you should suffer for, righteous sake, for righteousness sake, you are blessed. And do not be afraid of their threats, nor be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give and defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you, with meekness and fear, having good conscience that when they defame you, even doers, those who revile your good conduct in Christ may be ashamed. For it is better, if it is the will of God, to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. That ends our reading. May the Lord be praised. Now I welcome our superintendent, Minister Reverend um, Julius Mutembei, to come and give us the word for the, for the day. Welcome. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman, for taking us through the reading. God bless you. Uh, this morning I greet you once again. <laughs> In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and welcome you to our worship service and before we proceed we will pray we will have to pray before I proceed with the message of the day let us pray Mungu Baba Mungu Moana Mungu Rom Takatifu Kwa Yesu Kristo, tuko mbeleza kwa buwana asubui jema ya leo. Tunalinua jina lako buwana wa manjeshi na kukuabundu wewe. Maana maisha yetu yako mikononi mwako, familia zetu siko mikononi mwako, wewe ndiye tegemeo, wewe ndiye ukimbilio letu. Hatuna muingu muingine wakutegemea. Hila wewe ndiye mungu wa pekee wakati kama huu. Inaomba sasa bwana ninaponena habari jema katika maisha ya mwenzangu popote alipo 
ukaweze kuwabariki unaponibariki na saindi ya yote na kushukuru bwana kwa kunipa na, kwa kunipa nafasi njema hii ili niweze kuombea watu wako kuna wenye ambao ni wagonjwa sisi ambao tuko na afya siku ya leo imegarimu mkono wako na ndio maana tunasema asanti hata kabla ya kusikiza neno lako pokea sifa zetu pokea shukran kwa jina la Yesu Kristo tumeomba na kwa Amen. Now, our theme today is suffering for the right. Kuteseka kwa mema. Nataka niwaambie ya kwamba huu ni wakati mgumu sana kwetu sisi ambao ni wakristo. And when I was preparing this message, I came across the letter written by Apostle Peter. Apostle Peter is one of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, one of the staunch followers of Jesus Christ, and it is a Peter that Jesus sent he will build the church on him. Alikuwa ni mtumishi ama ni mtume ambaye alikuwa amejitolea sana kumfuata Yesu na hata akamwambia Yesu popote utaenda tutaenda na wewe hata ingawa alimkana Yesu mara tatu kama vile ilivyokuwa imetabiriwa na Yesu mwenyewe tumishi wa Mungu Petero alikuwa ni mfuasi ambaye alisimamia imani na aliweza sana kufanya kazi ya Yesu yeye ndiye mmoja wa wale wa mitume ambao walihubiri katika kitabu cha matendo ya mitume tatu alipohubiri watu elfu tatu waliweza kumpokea Yesu kwa hivyo ninapoongea juu ya Petero na nikiangalia barua ambao anaiandikia kanisa la Bwana Yesu anaandika hii barua wakati ambao kanisa linapitia changamoto sana Anaandika barua wakati ambao kanisa linateswa. And remember the church when it began in the book of Acts the church faced a lot of persecution and one of the great persecutors of the church is apostle Paul the formerly known Saul. And Peter is addressing the believers who have gone through suffering he is addressing believers that are experiencing unusual and unjust suffering and now how do i relate this message to the current situation that we are in today let me begin by saying we are suffering because of doing good and therefore even if we suffer because of doing good apostle peter is encouraging us several times he has repeated saying to the readers of his epistle that uh, we suffer but also with the expectation of the joy and the glory that is ahead of us we suffer yet we are expecting that we have an eternal inheritance that are with us tunateseka tukiwa na matumaini mbele yetu ya kwamba kuna furaha na kuna utukufu wa Mwenyezi Mungu ambao tutaurithi baadaye kwa hivyo kwa sasa tuateseka kwa muda mchache na ndiposa mwandishi wa Saburi anasema kilio kitaweza kundumu kwa usiku lakini asubuhi yaja na furaha and this morning i want to encourage you my dear listener and tell you that even though we are going through suffering and experiencing challenges at the moment the word of god is so clear to us that the suffering will not last forever in other words the mourning will not last for a night or it may last for a night 
but joy comes in the morning. Apostle P Peter, in his writing, he gives an instruction to believers. He instructs us as believers on how to behave properly in the midst of sufferings. And he says in the midst of unjust sufferings. I'm thinking as, a, as, a, as an individual today, the sufferings I'm being, uh, I'm experiencing, they are not caused by me, but they have just come and they have found me as I serve the Lord. And they have also come to you. They have not come as a result of your sin or of my sin. They have come as a result of our adventure. The virus that is making everybody to suffer in the world today is an invention invented by an individual in the world. And therefore, it is something that originated from somewhere. It is something that came from us human beings. And therefore, we are being subjected to this suffering as a church to a point of closing our, our churches because an individual somewhere or a certain group of people somewhere came up with an idea and then it backfired. Brothers and sisters, this is a high time to behave like Jesus Christ. And Peter is giving the model of Jesus Christ as the right model to follow during this time. The model of persevering in suffering. Jesus persevered. Jesus went through unusual and unjust suffering, but he persevered. And Apostle Paul is encouraging us, I'm sorry, Apostle Peter is encouraging us to persevere. He's encouraging us to continue serving the Lord even in the midst of this suffering. Peter is uh, called the apostle of hope, in quotes. Based on this letter, he is called the apostle of hope because he is giving hope to the church in the middle of persecution. Remember, these are the days when they could not even get out to preach. They were hiding in the house and praying. And it's because of the sufferings that were taking place uh, during that time. And I want to take you back a bit and tell you why the church was being persecuted. The church was going through persecution because when Jesus came into the world, he brought up a new order that was not there, that was somehow contrary to the order of Judaism. The initial religion that was trending in the Jewish culture at that time was the Judaism. And therefore, when Jesus came into the world, he somehow changed the order because he began by saying, I have come to set those who are captive or those who are in captivity free. I have come to declare liberty to those who are suffering. I have come to heal the sick. I have come so that the, the, the blind can see. And these were the things that many could not understand. Uh, uh, and they were not able to perceive the teachings of Jesus Christ. And sometimes they argued with him, especially the teachers of the law. So when Jesus died, they even thought he would not resurrect again. And they had planned that if he resurrects, they had even bribed the, the police that were guarding the tomb so that they can give the wrong information. But it did not last. So he resurrected and the gospel continued contrary to their expectations. And therefore, since they could not hold Jesus and they could not uh, destroy him completely, even after killing him, he resurrected, they could not do anything. They now began to persecute the apostles of Jesus Christ. And in this kind of scenario, Apostle Paul now writes to the church and he is telling them to, be, to persevere. He is encouraging them to be patient through the sufferings. 
And I'm coming from that kind of understanding that now in this kind of a situation, we may not be experiencing the same sufferings that the church was experiencing at that time, but somehow you can relate with this church, the Holy Church. We can relate in the sense that the mondo or the way the churches were closed, the way things were being rushed, the way churches were being sidelined, there were no consultation. We just closed the churches and that's all. Having in mind there are people who depend from the church. The church has employed so many people. We have schools that we are running. We have pastors that we pay salaries. And we depend on the collections that are collected every Sunday. But the manner in which the church was handled in the middle of this COVID-19 shows that the church was not given a priority. But that is something that is already gone. We are in the middle of the persecution. We are in the middle of the suffering. I'm coming to you, my dear listener, to encourage you and tell you that even though the church is undergoing this experience, the Lord is faithful. Let's go back to our scripture. First Peter chapter 3, verse 8. It talks about blessing those who curse you. Blessing those who curse you. I'm speaking to you as a man of God. I'm saying I concur with Apostle Paul. Even during this early time, it is the highest time as a Christian, and especially the body of Christ, it is our highest time to portray the picture of our Lord Jesus Christ to the world. That we should be able to show love to all people. We should be able to bless even those who persecute us. We should be able to pray for all people regardless of what they are doing to us. We should be able to support the government. Even when the government does not support us, we should not return evil for evil. We should not revenge. Let us leave the revenge to God. Because the Bible says, Vegas belongs to me. We should not start blaming each other. It is a high time for us to continue in prayer. Let us go contrary to the will of the devil. Maybe the devil is expecting us to act in a negative manner. But let us act in a positive way by praying for the government, praying for our members, and praying for the enemies of the cross. That is why Jesus said, we pray for those who persecute us. On his ceremony on the mountain, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 44, he reminds us to bless our enemies and to pray for them. In verse 13 of First Peter, it says, Peter proclaims that no external forces that can harm us spiritually. I'm coming to you this morning and I'm saying there is no external force that can harm you spiritually. And I want to read Psalms 56 verses 4. It says, in God I will praise his word. In God I have put my trust. I will not fear what can flesh do to me. I will not fear what can flesh do to me. And in God, I will trust. Brothers and sisters, let us continue trusting in God. Let us know that the external forces cannot harm you spiritually. Because your life is safe and secure in the Lord. So the suffering are for us. We are going through suffering but it is for the good of our church. So let us be sure that external forces will not harm you. Even when you are seated in the house, let me assure you that this suffering, they are physical, and they will not harm your spiritual part. Christians who suffer for the truth are blessed by God. 
wa Kristo ambao wanateseka kwa ajili ya injili na ukweli wa neno la Bwana wamebarikiwa Mwenzangu nataka nikuambie umebarikiwa hata unapopitia magumu hata kama dunia iko na misukosuko hata kama kuna misukosuko katika ulimwengu huu nataka nikuambie ya kwamba sisi ambao tunaopitia magumu na tumeokoka Oh Bwana ametuahindi siku ya leo ya kwamba sisi tuna baraka ambao inatungojea The Bible says The reward may delay our reward may delay for now And I want to tell you something you can even be praying and you are seeing as if prayers are not working but that does not mean our God has forsaken us The Bible says our God will never forsake you will never leave you He will always be there for us all the time Our ultimate trust is in Christ Jesus Christ And therefore as we focus to him Let us know that our ultimate trust remains in our Lord Jesus Christ. Apostle Peter again in verse 15 talks about in defending. And the word that is there is defense, defense. Defense defense comes from the Greek word apologia, apologia meaning defending the gospel or the truth being ready to defend your faith your hope in Christ standing for Jesus hallelujah how many are ready to be apologetic how many of us are prepared to defend their faith to be accountable Christians during this season because there will be so many questions People will challenge you. Now you are a Christian, where is your God? People will challenge us during this time. Some will tell us to do miracles. But let me tell you, you must be ready to defend your faith in Christ. This is a time that we as Christians should not compromise our faith. It is a time for a believer to stand for Jesus. Jesus has been standing for us for many times. Remember he died for us. He shed his blood for us. He suffered under Pontius Pilate for the sake of me. It is my time now as a Christian to defend the gospel. And that is why I will say like Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 1 verse 16 that i am not ashamed of the gospel i am not ashamed of the gospel and why why am i not ashamed of this gospel why am i not ashamed of this gospel it is because it is the power of god to salvation for everyone who believes this gospel is the power it is the power that has sustained me It is the gospel that has kept me. It is the gospel that is sustaining us in the middle of this situation. Therefore I am not ashamed to be called a Christian and to be specific to be called a pastor. Whether pastors are called pastors, whether people are saying pastors are ngundo band, this is the highest time for me to defend my faith. and to say that i am ready to preach the gospel even in the middle of this situation apostle paul says that even in the middle of the unjust suffering god is with us and just suffering is within the providence of god is for the good of his children and his own glory in other words and I'm saying whatever we are going through 
it is for our good and for the God's glory. Romans chapter 8 verse 28 says, All things worketh together for good and especially for us who are called according to his name. So whatever God is allowing us to go through at the moment, it is for the sake of the body of Christ. My brother and my sister, as I end my message today, I want to say that the church is going through a serious test. And let me say this. When God revealed this year's theme for our church, which is knowing Jesus Christ individually and experiencing the deliverance of God, and more so focusing on the verse in the book of Philippians, that is Philippians chapter 3 verse 10, that says, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. When this theme came here on that the first midnight, nobody of us knew that this year will be the year of COVID-19. And sometimes I tell people, God speaks through a theme. A theme of the year speaks a lot to a believer. And especially when it comes from God himself. I was wondering, what if my theme this year is experiencing abundance increase financially? What could be happening to our people? If our theme would be saying it is the year of abundance financial breakthrough, some of us would be blaming us. So it is the highest time also as a church when we write down our theme, we first of all pray, fast, wait upon the Lord himself to speak because God spoke through us and he said this will be the year of experiencing Jesus individually, knowing Christ individually, meaning you will sit in your house individually and read your Bible. And as you read your Bible, the Bible will direct you to your deliverance. Because after reading, you will experience the deliverance of God. So I am so happy and so humbled because God spoke to us even before this situation arose. So the members of Kariako, God had already prepared you to individually read the Bible and individually get to know Jesus. Not only knowing Jesus, get to understand the power behind the resurrection. And not only understand the power behind the resurrection, but also you should share in the suffering of our Lord Jesus Christ. So whatever we are going through, we are sharing, we are, we are experiencing, we are going through the power, and we are experiencing what Jesus experienced, but now we have a surety that we won't die, we will experience the blessings that are ahead of us. Because Jesus died for us, we are happy, we won't die. We are happy, we are going to experience the favor of God this year. And therefore we are suffering for the right. We are suffering because it is worth it to suffer for the sake of the gospel. May the Lord Almighty bless you even as you experience this moment. It is a time for us to suffer, but we are suffering for a moment. The Bible says, morning may last for a night, but joy comes in the morning. We will not suffer forever, but the joy of the Lord is my strength. Do not get tired of serving the Lord, even in your house. Do not give up your faith. Do not compromise because of the situation. It is my prayer that God will bless you even as you read the Bible and as you experience the Lord God Almighty individually in your family. I want to pray with you today. The Spirit of God is leading me so much this week to pray for the members of the church and especially a prayer of protection. Naisi ya kwamba bwana akiniambia niombe kanisa 
na kila saa ninapoamka asubuhi Bwana ananikumbusha ya kwamba niko na msigo wa kuombea kanisa Leo sina mengi ila nasikia roho akiniambia wewe ndanda wewe ndugu kuna jambo linakusumbua kuna hitaji moyoni mwako linakusumbua I am telling you today God knows you better than you think you know yourself I am assuring you today the prayer that we are going to pray it is a prayer of spiritual deliverance and healing in your life God is going to heal you God is going to deliver you Na ninayua ya kwamba kuna mwingine anaisi ya kwamba amefifia usififie ndanda yangu ndugu yangu ni wakati wa kuinuka usimame ni wakati wa kuinuka umtegemee Bwana kwa maana Bwana yu pamoja na wewe haijalishi yale ambao unapitia ninaja siku ya leo ni kuambia ya kwamba Mwenyezi Mungu akiwa mbinguni anatasama maisha yako na anayua chochote ambacho unapitia haijalishi ambacho wanandamu wamesema hata ingawa nyumba imefungwa hata ingawa kuna watu wanasema hauna chakula hata ingawa kuna watu wanakuambia uwame uende nyumbani si wakati wako wa kuama muji wa Nairobi ni wakati wako wa kumngojea Bwana nataka niombe na wewe unaponitasama pahali ulipo nataka uinue mkono wako unielekeze inua mkono wako njuu kimwambia Bwana niko mbele zako Hambia Bwana mimi nimekuja mbele zako. Sina chochote, sina Mungu mwingine wa kutegemea. Hila ni wewe. Hambia Bwana, sina Mungu mwingine wa kutegemea. Hila ni wewe mwenzangu. Twende mbele za Bwana tuombe pamoja. Popote ulipo, nataka niombe na wewe ukimwambia sina Mungu mwingine wa kutegemea baba. Hila ni wewe. Wakati kama huu ni wakati ambao sisi wanandamu tunahitaji kumtasama Mwenyezi Mungu pekee maana tukitasama serikali lamda haitatusaidia tukitasama marafiki zetu lamda hawatatusaidia tegemeo letu ni Mungu pekee Oh thank you Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh hallelujah. Give you all the glory Jesus. May the spirit of the Lord come down now in your house. Raba shekendere. Baba ni asanti. Shuka bwana wa manjeshi. Shuka mfalme wa falme. Hatuna Mungu mwingine bwana. Oh Mungu wangu. Shuka sasa unene nasi. Shuka sasa bwana unene na watu wako. Shuka sasa bwana ubariki familia saa kwa ambazo zimekungojea. Shuka bwana uokoe moyo ambao unahitaji uokofu. Shuka bwana uponye walio na magonjwa. Shuka bwana unene nasi. Oh bwana. Hatuna Mungu mwingine bwana wa majeshi. Isipokuwa ni wewe tegemeo letu baba. Wewe ndiye ukimbilio letu mfalme. Wewe ndiye Mungu wa bingu na inchi. Asubuhi ya leo baba. Nina nena katika jina la Yesu. Kwa niaba ya ndugu ambaye amekungojea kwa muda mrefu amekulilia bwana usiku wote asubuhi ya leo anauliza man of god what shall i eat what shall i drink as some breakfast baba katika jina la yesu ninakuomba ukamtembelee ukamtembele yule ndanda ukamtembelee yule ndugu katika nyumba yake katika jina la yesu tasama mama baya ananiangalia anasema ya kwamba sina chakula cha mtoto wala sina kinywaji cha mtoto baba tasama yule ndugu ambaye ni mgonjwa hospitali tasama yule ndanda ambaye amelaswa kitandani na ananiangalia na macho yake ninakemea mapepo ya ugonjwa ninafunga laana za magonjwa katika jina la Yesu Kristo ninatangaza uponyaji kutoka mdhabahu wa Kariakoo i am declaring healing upon your life 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Baba ulie mingoni, tasama sasa watoto wako, wameinua mikono juu, wanajua ya kwamba wana mungu mwingine, hila ni wewe baba wakutegemea. Hatuta tegemea miungu ya inchi sa inje, hatuta tegemea misanda ya maria kani, hatuta tegemea misanda ya wa China, tuna tegemea baba wa mingu na inchi, baba ambaye alie tuumba sisi wa Afrika, die mungu ambaye tunamtegemea. Sisi ni watoto wako bwana yaweza kuwa rangi yetu ni nyeusi lakini baba mioyo yetu ni meupe yaweza kuwa ya kwamba tupendezi mbele ya wanadamu lakini tunapendeza mbele zako yaweza kuwa Mungu tumekataliwa na wengine lakini tunapendwa na wewe watu wa Mungu watakufa watu wa Mungu watakufa yaweza kuwa tuna teknolojia ambayo itatusaidia lakini tuna Mungu mwenye teknolojia baba mwanzilishi wa sayansi you are the god of mighty the author of every technology the author of every science in the world in the name of Jesus we come to you today wewe ndiye Mungu wetu baba wewe ndiye kimbilio letu baba ninajua ya kwamba kuna wale ambao wanategemea akili zao kuna wale ambao wametabiri kwamba kulingana na akili zao ya kwamba wa Afrika watakufa lakini nasema ya kwamba sisi watu ambao tumepakwa mafuta sisi watu ambao tumemwagiwa ndapu ya Yesu hatutakufa we will live to experience the blessings of the Lord in the land of the living we will live to see our children as children we will live to enjoy the blessings of the Lord in the land of the living we want to thank you father for saving us for protecting us we thank you lord kwa maana tunaendelea kupokea baraka zako asante kwa baraka za mvua asante kwa chakula ambazo unaendelea kuleta kupitia mvua asante bwana kwa nchi ya Kenya asante kwa rais na viongozi tunaoombea hekima tunaoombea amani tunaoombea wananchi wa Kenya tunaoombea kila mmoja ili bwana tusimame katika imani yetu tutetee injili ya Yesu baba ni asante we give you all the glory we give you all the praise dear Jesus we thank you lord we bless your holy name thank you Jesus thank you lord i want to bless you as i head the service in the name of the lord There is no other name that can save you according to Acts chapter 4 verse 12 Ni ile jina tu la Yesu Kristo Hakuna jina lingine linaweza kuokoa maisha yako Hakuna jina lingine ambalo litatuokoa sisi watu wa Mungu katika nchi ya Kenya Ni jina tu la Yesu pekee liko na uwezo Majina mengine yote hayawezi na kila goti litapigwa mbele za Bwana na kila ulimi utakiri ya kwamba Yesu ni Bwana. Nataka useme nami kama hujaokoka siku ya leo. Kama wewe hujaokoka na ungelitaka kumpokea Yesu, sema Bwana Yesu. Nimekuja mbele zako. Mimi ni mwenye dhambi. Nisamee. Niokoe. Kuanzia leo jina langu baba liandike katika kitabu cha uzima na damu ya Yesu Kristo iliyomwaka msalabani inioshe dhambi zangu ninaamini na ninakiri na kinywa changu ya kwamba Yesu ni bwana na alikufa msalabani na siku ya tatu akafufuka nipate uzima Thank you thank you Lord Jesus for saving me today. Asante Yesu Bwana wa Mungu kwa kuniokoa leo. Nataka nibariki kila mmoja popote ulipo. Wengine wetu tunatoa sandaka kupitia till number. Tunawabariki kwa sababu ya kujitolea kwenu. Nataka niwabariki wote. Mungu Baba, Mungu Mwana Roho Mtakatifu kwa jina la Yesu Kristo. Nena nena baraka kwa ajili ya kila mmoja wetu. Wengine wanaji sacrifice. 
ili waweze kutoa sandaka wengine hata wamesimamishwa kasi wengine bwana hata wame nyimwa mishahara ya mwezi wa tatu. lakini baba ulie mbinguni hawatakosa chakula wala kinywaji ninawaombea Mungu kila siku wanaposimama na kasi yako simama na familia zao simama na maisha yao ninawabariki na kuwaombea amani popote walipo na Bwana ukawaweseshe ukawafunike kutokana na maofu ukawasuie kutokana na magonjwa paka wakati ambapo tutaonana tena kwa jina la Yesu Kristo aliyemwokozi na mkombozi wa maisha yetu tumeomba na kuamini amen god bless you so much and thank you for watching thank you for being with us we love you so much we value you so much let us continue suffering for the right but the time is coming when god will deliver us from all these sufferings and your businesses will thrive again your family will be the same again god will transform this world for the benefit of you believer don't worry of what is happening god is shaking the world for your sake just be vigilant be persistent in prayer pray without ceasing and god will bless you we love you and we wish you all the best even in the middle of this suffering may the courage of the lord be with you and the peace of the lord that surpasses human understanding be with you now and forever in jesus name and now we share the ones of grace with you and now may the grace of our lord jesus christ and the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with us now and forevermore amen let us meet again on wednesday 5:30 to 6:30 p.m. god bless you so much we love you have a wonderful week in jesus name Still be